look, when I interviewed those 400 girls before I got to, to, to Gabby, those are real life preciousness. And I learned so much from those girls, you know? Learned so much from them because they really, this, this self-esteem to walk around with people like that that really think that they're nothing, to be seen every day and not seen is a horror story. You know what I mean? People look right through you and just not even see you. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. And they were, they were Adam and Lair tarts and tap shoes <laughs> and boas and piano. And they were just, they were something, you know? They were something for a while. And it was just a very, I learned more from that experience with the girls than I had with, uh, than on set, because I was dealing with, you know, many, many preciousness. Can you talk about um, how you picked the cast? And, how, and I also want to find out how you got your friends, Monique, and also um, uh, Mariah Carey, to be the characters so unlike themselves. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, the first person cast was Monique, and uh, you know I called her up and I said, "Listen, this woman is uh, a ghastly. And you, 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 I think you're going to lose everybody from BET. This is before she had her BET show." And I said, "You're going to lose your fan base because you're the queen of BET." And she just she she wanted to do it before she trusted. This is real. She wanted to do it before she read the book. I knew she was going to do it before she read the script, rather. She said, sign me up. And then when she read it, she said, sign me up. You know? It's a trust that's there, you know? We are friends. And I think that uh, if you trust someone, then you get great performances. Actors are so used to acting, you know, and, and not trusting the director. But if you trust, just like, it's a different experience. You know, and then uh, Lenny Kravitz, you know, um, I said the same thing, you know, I said, come on aboard. It was just like, you know, oh, come on in, play his role. Helen Mirren was scheduled to play the ha uh, um, Mariah Carey character, because she had worked with me on my last film. And uh, she got a real job, paying real money. <laughs> <laughs> real, yeah. And, the, and like three uh, days before she was scheduled to shoot, mm -hmm. she said, Lee. I went, no, uh-uh, <laughs> no sister, <laughs> no way. Yeah. And, but you know, when you, when you come from theater and you, or you come from independent film, you, when a payday comes along, you're like so happy for your friends to get them. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, you know, part of me was angry, but part of me understood. And uh, so then Mariah called three hours later, saying, darling, darling, come over, come over, let's have a glass of champagne. And the, I go, no, I can't, I'm working right now. I'm working on my film, I'm trying to cast this role. She says, what is it? I said, Push. At that time it was called Push. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, I know the book. And the light bulb went off. But I wasn't, I just thought, I'm just desperate, I'm crazy. I said, okay, let me call you back. And I called, I called uh, back um, Helen. And I said, Helen, um, think of Mariah Carey. She said to me, if you, Cast her, it would be more interesting than casting me. Because you know that Helen's going to do a great job. You just know it. But it's expected. She said, if you can get Mariah to do something unexpected, it could be more powerful. And uh, so Helen helped me. She, so she helped me even on her fancy ass set. <laughs> <laughs> With her masseur, probably. <laughs> what did Mariah say when she first saw herself in character? She's, she never saw herself in character. I wouldn't let her. There, was no, there were mirrors. Oh, there was never a mirror around. Never. <laughs> Crazy, I wouldn't have been able to get her. No, there were no mirrors. <laughs> How closely did you stay to the script, or were there things that the actors threw in that you said, oh, this is great, i got to keep it in? Well, sometimes I lie. Sometimes I find myself saying, oh, no, we stuck to the script. <laughs> and then I find that we didn't. Like, I go, oh, that's not the script. And I, making a movie, you forget. It's like a train, okay? You're on the train, and then... You just, and it picks up, and it picks, and it picks, and you're full, and you're just, you're gone. And then you come to a screeching halt, and it's like you, you, your body's th th thrown ahead. I can't remember the filmmaking process. 
Um, some actors in some scenes say, I st I st it's my recollection that I stuck directly to the script. But then when I look at the scenes, some of them, some of them, some actors say that, uh, some actors, like Lenny says, I'm very strict. I go right by the, Lenny Kravitz says, you go right by the thing. Mo Mo Monique says, you go right by the, the word. But um, um, Gabby says that I don't. She's the star of the movie. So I really, it depends on the situation. If it doesn't feel honest to me in the moment, then I'll say, okay, what would you say in this? You, you had already read the book by the time the script came along, is that correct? I read the book, and it stuck to me like hot grits. It just was, it knocked me off of my feet. It was, it, 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 it was, I was gasping. It was, uh, I'd never read anything like it before in my life. Eight years, I stalked her every day, uh, every day. She didn't want anybody to have her book. Uh, she doesn't like Hollywood. She's a scholar, she's a poet, she's a teacher, she's a, a, she's a genius. And uh, she didn't want her book into a bad movie. And so when she realized that uh, whether or not I made a good movie or a bad movie, it wouldn't affect her great piece of literature. <coughs> and uh, it was when she sort of said, okay, okay, we, Either that or she was tired of me stalking her. <laughs> was she ever on set during the filming? Yeah, she's in the movie. She's, just, she's got a little cameo in the movie. She's, she plays the, uh, when, when uh, Precious is dropping her kid off to go upstairs to the social worker's office, she's the little, she's, I, th I just thought it was good luck to have her in the movie. She's, she, she, takes, uh, she takes Abdul before she goes upstairs to have the final confrontation with her mother. What about slapping Monique? I know about slapping Monique. I thought that I wanted to, that's a great, you know, I think that people, some people want to slap her. Some people want to just like hug her because she's, she's, uh, she's pretty fucked up. <laughs> she's pretty, I mean, she's twisted, she's yeah. something. Ain't right with her. And I think that we found that magic on set even, you know, like at the end, at the end scene, I go, Monique, how do we really throw people for a tizzy? Like, what do we have to do? Because we know you're an animal. Sheer Satan. Like, I should hate her. This woman let this happen to her child. And yet, her delivery, which was so geniusly executed by Monique, geniusly makes us think, oh, well, wait a minute, we can't think that. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm, I'm not supposed to say this because everybody has told me not to say it. But really, but it was a party. <laughs> and truly, I'm not supposed, I'm really not because everybody wants us to take it seriously, seriously. But we were laughing so hard because Monique is a comedian. And so she's a, she's a twisted piece. Yeah. And she makes, I think we laugh through the pain because there's no way we could deliver that with such. So what Monique would do, and, and the two of us together, it's like a Molotov cocktail, it's crazy. <laughs> so she, <laughs> the, this, the stairwell scene, Precious is at the top of the stairs, Monique's at the bottom of the stairs. I'm directing from the side. Monique says, you're a bitch. And I'm thinking, that's not good enough. Call her a fat bitch. And Monique starts laughing. And Gabby starts laughing. And she, uh, she, Monique says, you're a fat bitch. And I go, mm, that's not good enough. So call her a big, fat, black bitch. And she, she says, you big, fat. And so as she's saying it, she's, she's laughing. She, she can't believe it. This is crazy. And then Gabby's up at the top of the stairs, hysterically laughing. Monique, there's, a, there's one moment where Monique goes, Monique goes, uh, she goes, she goes, you really, she grabs her heart because she's just, she's just I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. There's a moment she bends down and she said, the way it's shot, you think that she's just like really traumatized by it all. Monique is hysterically laughing. She just had to stop. She, you know, because we were, because Gabby was going like this, you know, to her down the stairs. It was, um, it, we did it and it seems so real. And it was, uh, it's my genius editor that sort of helped me make it so real. But truly, I cannot tell you that we did not, the only upsetting part of the film where we, 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 we all were crying was the end, the end. That was not funny. But anytime Monique was and being, doing whatever happened to baby Jane, you know, or mommy dearest, it was, it was crazy, you know? It was crazy, it was crazy.